Cup Devils, 6 a.m. Fucking J Dog with the Devil Time. And today's Devil Time, we're going to fucking discuss what the Devils had to say. 51 Devils, to be exact. On if Dead of, Dead of Mayhem was still alive, the band would still suck. Just under 800 views as I'm reading this one with uh, 51 comments. So, pretty decent amount, you know, more than the average. Seems like the average, like a uh, just a regular fucking video where it's not too much hype or whatever, it's gets to the 500. So, if it's in the 800s or 1,000, then it, it seems like it's doing pretty good. So, you know, so good for that. But uh, a lot of people have shit to say. So, probably be a lot of comments left out because I can't do no goddamn 51. So, I'll go to the questions. And the first one I brought up was actually, actually, the very first comment is a fucking question. I, definitely something I can answer about from King Ivan. Shout out to you, Brabra. I don't even think I've ever answered any of your questions yet. Not that I recall anyways, I've even seen your name. How do you feel about hypocrisy? They're coming to my area, and I can't really decide if I like them or not. Laugh out loud. We'll probably go just to go. So hypocrisy, the uh, general rule of thumb is with them, is the first two albums are fucking phenomenal. Absolute tens. Go watch the goddamn fucking scale video again. God damn it. That one didn't get too many views. How to rate a fucking album. One to ten. Um, less obvious than what you would think. A, a proper fucking rating. People give out nines and tens way too easy in my book. But anyways, uh, Hypocrisy, the first two, uh, Penetralia and Asking Them Obscenum. And then they got an e EP to uh, Pleasures of Molestation. And the Asking Them Obscenum uh, disc that I have, it's a digipack. I believe it's a two-on-one. It's got the Asking Them Obscenum album on there and the Pleasures of Molestation um, EP as a bonus. And that stuff's fucking great. And So basically what I would say with Hypocrisy is all the stuff with Maysay or Mace, however you pronounce his fucking name, singing was fucking great. And a little fun fact about that is so... I love, I absolutely love his vocals, and I love that early hypocrisy shit. And the thing is, it's weird is, I found out probably when I was about age 25 or so, so I've known for quite some time now, maybe even a little later than 25, maybe 26 or 27, that uh, that's actually the singer for Dark Funeral on uh, Vobos Cum Satanas, uh, Diabolus Centurion, which that's my favorite Dark Funeral album. Diabolus Centurion, the third album by Dark Funeral, that's definitely my favorite Dark Funeral album, and that's one of my all-time favorite black metal albums ever. And for years, I didn't realize that was him because he goes by the uh, name uh, Caligula in Dark Funeral, and his vocals are totally different. They're total black metal vocals, and in Hypocrisy, they're total, like, brutal fucking... His vocals are so fucking sick in Hypocrisy. And anyways, I don't know why he left Hypocrisy or whatever, And uh, but yeah, with Dark Funeral, I didn't know that for years. So I was a huge fan of... Uh, <clears throat> I grew up on... Um, grew up listening to those early Hypocrisies and Dark Funeral. And for years, I didn't even know it was the same fucking dude. So when I finally found out, like, I don't know, fucking literally like 10 years later, I was like, holy shit, I never fucking knew that. Pretty goddamn cool. Like, literally, Hypocrisy, the old logo, I have one of those metal badges. That was, remember if I show you guys my uh, jacket uh, with all the patches and pins and shit? Go on, watch the goddamn jacket video if you fucking missed it. Uh, just go to my channel, go to videos, and search it out. Goddamn it, it's on there in case you haven't seen it. And uh, that's literally the first thing I put on my jacket. That was the first thing I got. Was uh, And I think maybe I got it from Brian's shop, or I don't remember exactly where I got it. But I think I was... 14 or 15 when I got it, and that was the very first thing. So you see it all covered in pins, patches, spikes. The Epoxy logo was the first thing I absolutely got. Definitely think they're a super underrated band. And then, yeah, basically once Mace, Macy, or whatever the fuck his name is, left the band, uh, it's Peter Tackfren, who t took over vocals, and I didn't really, I didn't like any of that shit that he's on. I mean, I'd have to go back and listen to, like, Abducted and shit, but I remember not liking it. The one I knew the best was the final chapter it was okay metal record. I remember they covered Evil Invaders Razor cover on there. Um, it's definitely, it's a totally fucking different band. I remember it being an okay metal record. I didn't even keep the disc. I ended up selling it, so I didn't think it was that fucking great. But it's been like, fuck, last time I heard that is at least 15 years ago. Um, if, if, if it came in, if it got reissued or something came into the shop, I'd probably put it on the player again to check it out. I do know, though, I have heard albums after that, like maybe... So in the final chapter, what was that? Maybe 99, 2000, somewhere around there. I heard albums after that, or mid-2000s, whatever, 2005 or so, that I didn't like at all. I was like, what the fuck is this? And, um, but yeah, first two albums after that, either way, even if you do like abducted shit, it's definitely, they definitely changed. But the first two hypocrisies, to me, those are mandatory motherfucking death metal. Can't go to your goddamn grave without it. So as far as if they were coming to town, would I go? Eh, if it was on a convenient day, because I mean, yeah, they're gonna ninety percent of the songs they're gonna play. I'm not gonna recognize. They'll probably play one song off the first album, one song off the second album. Rest of the shit up. I don't even know what the fuck this crap is, and uh, it's just drastically different to me. It's just it's radio <coughs> it's radio friendly fucking uh, extreme metal. That's the best way I could put it. So 
I'd rather see the young bucks and kids that are getting into shit. I'd much rather them see them listening to that over Slipknot, Corn, Limp Biscuit, Tool, Marilyn Match, and shit like that. But it's also like, I don't fucking need it. I mean, there's better shit. But it's at least, like I said, respectable. It's not like some, you know, um, like the new, or, 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 or more respectable than all that death core and all that other fucking bullshit. It's, it's, it blows that crap away, but it's just, it's just mediocre fucking, uh, radio friendly, um, just commercial metal. You know what I mean? So nothing I need. First two albums, I've got to have them, bro, bro, bro. Don't go to your grave without them. Absolutely awesome. Should probably be a lot of comments. I just skimmed them because I didn't want to spend a lot of time looking at these. I'll skip the goddamn essays and books. Um, but I'm going to assume there's going to be a lot of talk about Mayhem and uh, Dead and shit like that, which is cool with me. Just for the record, yeah, I actually, uh, all the stuff, early Mayhem stuff, I love. That's some of my favorite Black Mountain, too. And I, I was on a roll there for a while. I kind of stopped because I think I got them all, and there was just a lot of the same shit getting rehashed. My whole thing is I was collecting every uh, bootleg record that uh, Dead was on, especially. So I have quite a bit of uh, Mayhem boots. Nah, I mean, a decent amount. It seemed like it was about maybe like half a dozen or so. But it was all that existed probably 10 years, 10 years ago and prior. Uh, I was always out, I was scoping them out because I always loved that shit with Dead. I just made the comment just because I never thought there, when you really break it down, like, especially the uh, people outside of the scene, they think like, oh man, these are some scary fucking medieval primitive guys. And it's just like, they're a bunch of fucking pussy depressed kids. Like at the end of the day, cool music, great music. And maybe they're nice guys, but I mean, there were nothing, in reality, nothing scary about them. Just kind of a cool, cool story. That was a good band at the time. From Candy Bickle, God damn it. Here's a question for you. Just the way I like it. About five years back, I saw Nuke and Deceased play here in Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, yeah, I think I went to saw them probably when they played in here for Ohio, but I don't remember the Ohio show, but we, me and my wife, we drove out to um, Indiana. It was them with the Lurking Corpses, and we saw that. And I think it was, like, right after our fest the one year. I think so, because then the year after at that, they played Deceased did it again. I think they did it with Savage Master. We were also at that, too. It, you know, Deceased, Savage Master, Lurking Corpses. Steve-O from Rampetago lives here. You don't even know, I don't even know where Steve-O lives, so that's pretty cool. I never met Steve-O. I would love to, though. I met Mark, and he was super cool. Got my pic pic picture with him. I'm pretty sure it's on Eric's camera. I've never seen it since this goddamn day. Another motherfucking photo I got to track down. And was at the show, so King Folly handed him the mic, and he did vocals for a verse of a deceased song, which was fucking awesome. Yeah, that sounds pretty neat. That makes me wonder, are there any mashups you'd like to see that never happened? Um... Mashups I'd like to see that never happened. I mean, guy talked about fucking Epoxy coming to his town and fucking Macy, Masse, Cal Caligia, whatever the fuck his name is. First singer of Epoxy, goddammit. Um, if he was there and if he jumped on stage and he uh did vocal, like for example, like guy asked if uh if I would go to hypocrisy. And if, if, honestly, probably not. If it if it was on a Friday or Saturday, maybe, and depends who, who else was playing with them. If it was another band I liked, maybe. But I would say this. Just a mashup to talk about, like, if it was, like, Hypocrisy's coming to fucking town and all they're playing is, like, like they're playing the entire Penetralia album and Macy or Masi or whatever the fuck his name is, is singing for him. Um, I would definitely, so that'd be a mashup. I, I would definitely go go to that. I mean, is that a mashup or is that just kind of a comeback? So, I don't know. Does that answer your question? Uh, so, maybe since there's a band that don't count. But that'd be cool as fuck. I'd definitely go see that. I don't know. Something maybe unrealistic that'd be cool. Maybe, like, Corpse Grinder going on stage with Deicide. I don't know. Something like that would be kind of fucking cool. Or vice versa. Glenn Benton going on stage with uh, Cannibal Corpse. I mean, something like that would be cool as shit. Um, kind of like when there's those videos, those old videos. Remember how like uh, King Diamond went on stage with Metallica? Other way around. You know, bigger bands that are, I mean, I, they at least know each other. I don't know if they're friends or not. I mean, Deicide, Glenn wrote fags on my Cannibal Corpse Butcher to Birth so maybe they're not friends. But anyways, same era. So if they kind of meshed on stage, that would be cool as fuck. I would. I would dig that. That'd be that'd be fun to watch. Uh, from Life Eternal. Yeah, Dead was 22 when he died. Yeah, I mean, like, when you break it down, like, God damn, 22, man, that is, like, stupid fucking young dude. You, you've had hair on your dick for only a few years. I think once Euronymous didn't have any musical input, it was a downward spiral from there. Oh, I'm sure, yeah, like, because even Wolf Slayer Abyss, I think that fucking disc sucks, to be honest with you guys. I don't like it. I mean, it's not, it's not Grand Declaration of War bad by any means, but I just thought it was just a Pointless, nothing there, black metal album. Though I do like some of the post classic mayhem era, but if I could bring one musician, ba just, one musician back, it would be it would no non questions asked be Corathon. I want Norlands three and four. What do you think of the new Abath stuff? Uh, 
so I remember when Coruscant died, what was that, like 2003 or so? I was, I didn't particularly care that much. It was kind of like, oh, bummer, because like the last thing by Bathory I personally liked was Bloodfire Death. I will say this, though. He would have been somebody, like, let's say he was still alive over the time. He would have been, like, a main guy I would love to have met and, like, have him sign, like, at least my my first. The first Bathory album is definitely my favorite. That is definitely one of my favorite Black Metal albums to this date. I just don't like that. I generally don't bring up Bathory too much just because it seems like, yay, duh. You know what I mean? That's I think I think that's why I don't bring up goddamn uh, Mayhem too much either because the same thing. It just seems lame. Like, oh, yay. I mean, fucking, they, at this point, they sell fucking Bathory shirts at Hot Topic, I'm pretty sure. So it's just fucking lame. But yeah, I'm in mean, Bloodfire Death down, but especially my favorite ba- Bathory's is definitely Bathory Bathory and um, Under the Sign. Uh, I mean, I fucking, yeah, I love those. Those are some really, really, really good records. So, I mean, I would have loved to have met Corathon and like had him sign those. That would have been fucking awesome and, and get my picture with him. But I mean, when he died, it was kind of like all that stuff that he was putting on the Norlands and stuff like that. Um, Twilight of the Gods. I, don't, I mean, I didn't like that shit at all, personally. I thought Requiem was a pretty good album. Kind of weird, like, Fucking thrash with the goddamn was that was that even that with a drum machine? Thought it was a pretty cool album. Didn't think it was Bathory, but I, I like it as a whole. It's been a while since I listened to it, but uh, I remember liking that album. And what do I think of the new Abbas stuff? Uh, I, I vaguely heard it, and I remember not really caring for it. But I mean, all the Abbas stuff that uh, he sings with Immortal, I love. With the exception, I think I told you, like I was weird on Immortal. That was another band that got better. Like the first two Immortals, I don't really like the um, Diabolical. And uh, Pure Holocaust, I'm pretty sure that's the first. I mean, Diabolic's first, Pure Holocaust, I believe, is the second. And then the third is Battles in the North, right? Battles in the North is by far my favorite. Like, fucking uh, Battles in the North is definitely one of my favorite black metal albums. However, that's the first album I heard by them. But even, like, um, Sons of Northern Darkness, the last one, Damned in Black. Um, trying to blank, what's the one with the fucking mountains and shit? Um, you guys know what I'm talking about. Blue Cover, Mountains, six, seven songs, long as fuck. Um I took my time. I don't. That, that's. I think that's a really good album. Uh, At the heart of winter. God, God damn it. Told you. I draw blanks when I'm doing these fucking videos, but I know it. God damn it. So, um, yeah, all that shit with the Both I did like, and then the Immortal albums. Even like, I listen to the Immortal albums, the comebacks when he was off, and I'm like, eh, it's it's, it's kind of like when uh Legion left Marty. I'm like, it doesn't suck, but it's just, it's just kind of like a bummer for me because that was like a ba- band that uh that I really followed strongly when I was a kid, both Marduk and Immortal, and with the singer that I knew that I got to see live, and I got to meet both of them, too. As a matter of motherfucking fact, I have my picture with a Bob. Let me see if I can dig it out of here real fucking fast. If we could get some of that fucking time, Devils, let's see if I could get it fast. I was on Francisco's goddamn fuck. Ah, here it is, here it is, goddamn it, right fucking the bottom. It's me, Eric, and Chase fucking... Sea Dog and fucking Easy in the photo. And Abbas was really cool, dude. He tur- turned his fucking eyelids inside out and shit. So, bald dude is Chase. There's me, Abbas, and Easy E. So, um, that was the first time I saw Immortal was for Damned in Black. And. Don't think I met him then. And then the second time, this was for Sons of Northern Darkness. And I had him sign all my stuff that I had at the time. Got the picture with him. He was really fucking friendly. He was really cool. Uh, I figured he'd be kind of standoffish. So just things like that. You know how I showed you my picture with uh, Legion before. At least I'm pretty sure I did. And I don't know. Just like when they were out of the band, it's just kind of like maybe how the, the real, real old fucking devils that grew up in the 70s and shit when they were listening to Black Sabbath with Ozzy. It's almost kind of like when Ozzy left, and it's probably, even if they did like the deals, it's probably like, oh, kind of a lit down bummer. It's kind of how it was then, because like the mortal all, all shall fall and stuff. I listen, it didn't suck. I'm just like, yeah, just just that the, just that kid inside me, I guess, that knew what I knew. That's why I grew up. It just wasn't the same. But I mean, if somebody said like this is great fucking ten out of ten black man, I wouldn't think I wouldn't think look at him like they're an idiot. I don't. I didn't think it was junk. Mm, just more of a fucking comment. Need some goddamn questions. Oh, here we go. Uh, from Resident Evil God. Great uh, video once again, J Dog. I wanted to ask what your thoughts on Christian worship bands are. That's why I wanted to read this because I do have some thoughts. Like Abhorrence and Rebellion, both are from Brazil and they and are definitely recommend to fans of early Christian. Yeah. Um. So I mentioned uh, watch my past videos, goddamn. Bra- 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 you definitely know my opinion on Abhorrence. 
I uh, tried to do the Evoking Abominations on vinyl, but uh, lame old listenable fucking uh, dropped the ball. Whole story's in fucking one of the videos. Don't remember which one. Just go watch all the fucking past videos, goddammit. Get caught up and you'll get all the fucking scuttlebutt. So Abhorrence, Evoking the Abominations is close to my favorite, but I think of the Christian worship. Of all the Christian worship albums, I Evoking, I was always say, yeah, it's there, but I think my number one favorite is Rebellion, Burn the Promised Land, their first full length. I fucking love that goddamn record. Dude, that is a 10 of this fucking day. Um, then their second full length, Annihilation. I have it. I, I like it, but I don't love it. It's like, that's when they change singers. The drummer just seems like he's kind of out of gas compared to the fucking first album. I just, it, it's good, but not great. Like, I'd give, I'd give Annihilation probably on the scale a 6. But uh, Burn the Promise Line, I'd give that a 10. I fucking love that album. And there's other fucking good uh, bands. There was... Uh, Abomination, Funeratus, um, uh, Mental Horror was kind of good, but their songs, I liked how the, the blasts were so fucking precise and fast as fuck, but it, it was, the songs were a little monotonous and blurred together. Uh, who else was, uh, uh Chris, uh, there's a bunch of them that I knew, uh, they had a bunch, uh, it's funny because I own a bunch of them too, but, uh, like I said, Abomination, Funeratus, I know I'm fucking thinking of somebody else. Um, there's definitely somebody else, too. It's got about a, there's a few. But anyways, those are the ones that come to my mind. But Rebellion and uh, Abhorrence, like you said, uh, it's funny. Like That's why I wanted to read that comment is because nobody really brings this shit up. You know what I mean? Like When somebody brings up Abhorrence, they're always talking about the Finnish band, which I do like that. But personally, for me, Abhorrence evoking the, abomination, evoking the Abominations album, I think that smokes everything the fucking Finnish band did. I like the finish, man. Chill the fuck out. I know the old devils are going to fucking get pissed. Uh, I, I have the goddamn LP, that reissue Spire LP, the CD. I like it. I dig it. It's good shit. It's classic stuff. But for me, the, 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 there was no competition for Abhorrence from Brazil. God damn it. So it's just funny because nobody brings those bands up. That's why I was like, oh, shit. Fuck yeah, guys bringing up awesome shit. He's on my, literally, this is what I'm into. So it's, I kind of get excited when people bring up the shit that I love because usually people don't. They're bringing up stuff that I'm kind of like, eh, or I'm, fuck, some stuff I've never even heard of. Jay Dinkins, kind of a comment. I agree that dead being alive wouldn't have changed things much. Things still would have changed after Euronymous died. Yeah, but honestly, uh, I, I kind of put in the same category. Even if Euronymous was still, let's say Euronymous and Dead were both still alive, chances of both of them still in the band, Euronymous probably would have kind of his band, but maybe Dead would have left or whatever. Um, either way, let's just say Euronymous and Dead were both in the band. I mean, I can guarantee you, would they have put out a Grand Declaration of War album? Who knows? Let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say no. But more likely, it'd probably be like, yeah, it's okay. You know, stuff coming out. I don't think it would be some of the like, legendary fucking awesome stuff. It'd probably just be like, yeah, it's whatever. Uh, Carpenter Course, killer video, blah, blah. Question, who would win in a horrible bros fight? Is there some funny stories between you guys growing up? Uh, I kind of answered this on Francisco's podcast. So listen to the podcast I did with him a few days ago. Uh, but general rule of thumb, whoever's the oldest one. So uh, when he was in the house before he moved out, our oldest brother, who left the sacred rake tape, Sean, he was able to whoop all our asses. So whoever's oldest. And I'm I'm third from the fucking bottom. So it's just my sister's the youngest and Craig's younger than me. So I had a lot of fucking ass whoopings because they could all whoop my ass at the time. Uh, Goatman. Got to read out Goatman because he comments on everything. I, I think Goatman has commented on every single video from my very first video, the first day I put it up, till current. So, gotta, gotta read out Goat Man. Uh, yeah, the vocals on Death Crush sound like a seagull being castrated. It's interesting to hear your thoughts on Satanic Warmaster, though. What's the most extreme black metal stuff that you like? Or most extreme stuff in general? Um, I mean, I kind of, I mean, is there anything more extreme black metal wise than, yeah, like the, uh, I don't know, the Marduk, Unlord, Enthroned, the Black Dawn album? Um, piety, the early piety stuff. I mean, that's what I, the stuff I love. Those are my favorite black metal bands. That stuff. I mean, is there shit that's more extreme than that? I mean, do I know? Is there something I don't know? I mean, if you consider, because you mentioned down here, personally, I bring back Eric Anamora. He was original and stuff. Early Pro Fanatica. I mean, I don't know. Is Pro Fanatica more extreme than them? I mean, I mean, image wise, you know, fucking letting me with his, his schlong hanging out and shit, I guess was kind of extreme. But, um, musically, I didn't think so. I mean, but, but I like it. I mean, I like Pro Fanatica too, though. So, um, I like Marduk and shit more, but if, if you consider Pro Fanatica more extreme than all those bands I mentioned, then, well, I like Pro Fanatica too. Just not as much. Uh, 
uh, from Scott Tannick, one's Metal Dungeon. I know I've commented on a few of yours. John from Dissection most definitely would be the guy I'd bring back from the grave. Pretty sure they'd bounce back from the turn that was Ran Chaos. I hope anyways. Yeah, when you say that, that's the reason why I, he wouldn't be the one is because I figured that they'd be even turning it up even more. However, no one I know, even before, John, just the fact that he's in prison, he's another guy. Like, <clears throat> I would have loved to see, like, Dissection live and met John, get my picture with him and get my uh, LP signed. That would have been cool as fuck, uh, if nothing else. Whether they did another good album, that would have been just out, you know. Like I showed you my picture, like, with Doc and Vader and shit, and I was dead. I mean, have saying I met John from um, Dissection, got a photo with him and stuff signed. I mean, that would have been fucking awesome. Would love to, but fortunately, never met him. Never even seen Dissection, actually. And Rain Chaos, yeah, uh. I didn't, I didn't care for it. I will say this. I went back and listened to it. That's what I was like, it's not that bad. It's just a little different, a little more radio, radio friendly. Uh, but it's not horrific. It's not It's not Grand Declaration of War. But yes, uh, Somber Lane and uh, Storm of Life Bane are way fucking better. Definitely agree with that. Ricky J. Hey, J-Dog. Would like to get more demos on CD. Do you find it more difficult to find demos on that format? Yes and no. Uh, ten years ago, it seemed like that's what about about yeah about ten years ago before the cassette boom back. It seemed like that's what uh the format ever of choice people were doing it like on a CDR. Uh, personally, yeah, I do prefer a demo on CD myself because I don't even have a cassette player. And I, it's just one of those things. Now, now that tapes came back and pe lots of people are doing them, and it has crossed my mind to go out and get one. I said, I just really, I just really don't want to start another physical format. If nothing else, because uh, I don't know, I feel like I'm starting over, <laughs> over. You know what I mean? Um, kind of from scratch, and also too, like I got kind of nowhere to. I mean, it's kind of a lame excuse, but somewhat true is I have nowhere to put them. I'm already fucking tight on room as is. And I just don't like the fact that, dude, it just, that was the biggest thing with tapes. I don't like the fact that tapes wear out. You know, as you listen to them and listen to them, because I've had it happen with uh, ones that I've had when I listen to my car, like the Manicore demo and shit. They get to the point where they're like, rrr, rrr, in the background, it sounds like they're fucking underwater, you know, at the store to the bottom of goddamn ocean. I just don't like that. As opposed to CD, you can listen a million times, it still sounds good. And I never, even records, I mean, I've never had record where I was, as long as you don't scratch it or warp it or anything. I've never had one wear out that, that I've ever heard. So. From Mac Powers question. Did you ever get teased about your death metal t-shirts from peers or other adults growing up in the last several years? Oh, in the last several years. So I kind of answered this on a previous uh, episode. Go back and watch. The answer is basically no. And, and in the last several years, definitely fucking not. They did be told to eat shit and die. Um, yeah, nobody's, nobody said shit to me in the last fucking 10 years. Uh, also, do you like any industrial metal acts? I do not. As a matter of fact, industrial is probably my most hated style of music in the fucking world. That may be like grunge. Like, like I'd, I'd honestly, I'd rather listen to rap over industrial. Industrial just, I don't know. It's, 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 it's it almost gives me a headache. Like, for example, like mid tier, I like, some people, some guy in the comments, he said like early fear factory is good. I find that hard to believe, but whatever, maybe. But I, the albums from, like, the mid-90s and shit, I know I've heard them. And so I'm playing them. And it's like that industrial metal. Dude, I literally just fucking just barf bag city. Like, I literally can't. It's not like, oh, I don't like this. It's literally like, this is literally giving me a fucking headache. So industrial, I've, I've always, I never could get into it whatsoever. Maybe there's something out there I would, but everything I've ever heard, I was like, this is literally giving me a fucking headache. A lot of guys saying the same thing as far as metal juice bring back. Jesse Potato, Corthon, you know, kind of the same thing. Uh, yeah, a lot of guys coming on the <laughs> Jay Dickens, Led Zeppelin's the greatest metal band ever, laughing his ass off. Picked up on that, huh, bra bra? <laughs> True story, too. I'm not making that shit up. I'm not, it wasn't like exaggerating. That's what he, what the fuck he said. Uh, I'll make this the last one. Pretty fun. Lordy and the Epic 112. What are your favorite cover songs done by bands? I don't, mm, shit. I, I will say this might, uh, offend some of the fucking devils, especially the, uh, the, um, the Cavalt Devils is I really like the cover song, um, Cradle of Filth did. Of Iron Maiden, Hollow Be Thy Name. I really like their version of that. Always have. Thought that was really, really good. Uh, oh, I thought uh, another one I like. I like uh, Exhumed, uh, Sodomy and Lust. Uh, Sodom cover. I like I like that much better than the original. Uh, now, don't you? I just think the original is just, it's really tame. Like, which is Sodomy and Lust. It's just kind of fucking like, dude, where's the fucking balls at? Like, I just thought Exhumed's version was, 
I, I like the Zoom version much better. I'm not saying the uh, Cradle of Filth, because I like the uh, Hollow Be Thy Name is actually probably one of my favorite Maiden songs in general, so I like the original a lot, so I'm not going to say I like the Cradle of Filth more, but whatever, I like it, their cover version a lot. But uh, for the Exhumes, um, Sodomy and Lost, I definitely like that better. <sighs> Other covers that I thought were really fucking good. Hmm. Drawing a fucking blank. Well, I mean, one that's come to mind that I like a lot, uh, Mortician Procreation of the Wicked. thought that was fucking uh, really cool. Just, just <laughs> fucking kind of like, you know, the slow to, uh, tune song and just hearing the, the brutal vocals. That, I like, I definitely like that. It's on House by the Cemetery. Um, There's definitely others, but I'm drawing a blank, but... For sure, yeah, for sure. Those, yeah, leave it in there. Who, who do you guys think some of the best cover songs? I know there's, I know there's shit. I'm fucking forgetting it. Uh, look at this, Six Feet Under. No, they don't have the best fucking covers, but I like. The, I mean, this Haunted Album. I even feel I love this fucking first Haunted Album. And as a matter of fact, actually, on the uh, disc after this, Live Undead, where they do like two originals, a cover, and like three live songs, something like that. I thought their uh, Judas Priest cover Grinder on that. I thought that was pretty good. Um, on that, but what the, all that. But I mean, anything after Maximum Violence when they're doing all that stuff. Like, oh, I know, I don't like any of that Graveyard's classic shit. It's fucking ridiculous as fuck. I uh, don't really know most of it. I mean, it was Reaper that was always dogging on him and making those videos. So I kind of heard a lot of him from that. I'm just like, I don't really care what I was. Like, yeah, it kind of sounds silly. I didn't hate it as much as him, but it's like, yeah, it just kind of sounds silly and dumb. So uh, just just kind of funny because at this point, look, Six Feet Under and their later shitty days, kind of known to be. I mean, as a side project, almost a cover band, right? It's ironic that I'm answering that question and wearing this fucking shirt. Just thought I'd throw that in there in case any wise ass puts it in the comments. Fully aware of it. No, I don't like their shitty graveyard classics. So, yeah, don't, <laughs> don't put it in the comments. Well, they don't get eight fucking six feet under best covers. <laughs> never thought that. Never never said that. So, uh, yeah, so put out who you fucking think the best covers are. There's probably somebody who's my all time favorite cover that I'm just not even fucking thinking of. So put it in there. Yeah, great fucking cover songs by bands. Uh, and whatever goddamn questions you have, those, and you know you'll get them answered, like here. And if it's one that uh, you left before, and if it's something you really want answered, because again, I skim, and I'm trying to keep these vid videos not too, too long. So if it, if, it, if it gets overlooked and it never gets answered, just keep asking it. Because if I see it multiple times, I'll definitely answer it. Oh, this guy really wants this answer. And I'm like, I'll recognize it. So throw them in there, goddammit, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.